So you're applying to jobs, the recruiters are reaching out to you, you're having conversations with them, you're even having conversations with hiring managers, and in your opinion, these interviews are going great. But you're still not getting any offers, and you're just going round and round in circles. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about why this might be happening. But before that, if it's your first time seeing this face, thank you for clicking this video. My name is Nicole Nyasha. I'm a certified professional recruiter based in Canada, and I share career-related content. And if you're already a part of this community, thank you for returning back. I've worked in recruitment for over five years, so believe me when I say there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Let's start with the most obvious reason why you're not getting hired and then focus on the rest. The most obvious reason why you're probably not getting hired is the company found somebody who is better than you in terms of experience or somebody who's better than you in terms of being a good fit for the team. And this happens all the time. A job posting can get anywhere from hundreds to thousands of applicants depending on the kind of role and the organization. From those hundreds to thousands, the recruiter will select a handful to meet with. This handful is based on the recruiter reviewing resumes and selecting candidates who they think would be the best for the job. Once they've had conversations with these candidates, they're going to pick the very best of the best they've spoken to and have those meet with the hiring manager. So anybody who's meeting with the hiring manager, the recruiter in their head already knows that this person can do the job. This person is a good fit for the job. And now the hiring manager is just confirming what the recruiter already thinks and picking the best of the best. And so if a hiring manager is meeting with five candidates, for example, all these five people are likely people who can do the job, are people who are experienced. And so the competition is really tight. So if you don't end up being selected, it could simply mean that from the five people in this example who the manager met with, including yourself, somebody was better than you, they had a better personality than you, or maybe they had like a distinguishing or wow factor that made them stand out. Maybe they have more experience in a tool or in a system that the company wants to start using. And so the manager thinks this person would be the best person to select because they're gonna bring the knowledge and experience in that tool and train the rest of the team. If you've watched any of my interview preparation videos, I always stress on the importance of being personable and relatable in your interviews and the power of storytelling when you're speaking with recruiters and hiring managers. That's really one of the key things that can make you stand out in an interview. Because for the most part, anybody that's meeting with a hiring manager can do the job. But if you really leverage the power of storytelling and come off as personable and relatable in that interview, you're going to be more likable and it's going to be easy for the hiring manager or managers to relate with you and choose to hire you over the other people who are experienced but not so much relatable. Because more than just doing a job, managers want people that can relate with the rest of the team, that bring personality and that are going to be easy to work with. Another reason why you might go through a process with a company and they don't end up hiring you is they might have hired somebody who came in as a referral. Think of it this way, if you're a hiring manager and have five people, for example, on your team, and then somebody who is a top contributor, high achiever, doing really well and contributing to your bottom line, comes and says, hi manager, I know this person who I worked with at so, -so Company, or I know this person who is a good friend of mine, or I know this person who comes to my church. Whatever reason it is that this employee gives and tells you that they are highly recommending this person and they would love for this person to be considered for the job, are you going to give first preference to this person that has come as a referral or to somebody that's just applying? Probably you're going to give preference to somebody who's coming in as a referral because somebody who's already a top performer on your team is sticking out their neck for this person. So as a manager, you're going to meet with this referral and if indeed they do show that they have potential, you're likely going to take a chance on the referral versus the other person. 
This is a very common reason I hear HR professionals and recruiters speaking about in a lot of groups and communities that I'm a part of. For the most part, a referral will always take preference over you if you're just applying and you don't have somebody to refer you. And so whenever you come across a job that you think you'd like, a company that you'd really want to work for, think about whether you know anybody at all that's in that organization. And if you do, Ask that person to refer you. That's if you have a good relationship with that person. Ask that person to refer you versus you going to apply on your own. Another reason closely linked to referrals why you might not get hired is if an internal candidate applies. An internal candidate is basically somebody who's already working in that organization. It could be somebody in a different department or in a more junior role, it could be any reason, but for whatsoever reason, if somebody internal applies to that job, even if it's at the last minute and you've already interviewed, that person, if they're anywhere close to having the skill required for the job, will be given first preference over you. Some people might say this isn't fair because you've already gone through the process, but I think what's important to most companies is to retain an existing employee. So if it means that hiring an employee in a new department or in a new role will keep that employee happy, will keep them engaged, they would rather do that and train that employee to be where they need to be versus hiring somebody new. Somebody who's already on the inside knows the systems, they know the organization, they know the people. For the most most part they know the product and so it's going to be easier to onboard that person from one lens on the other lens you might look at it and say but the person might not have the experience yes it's true but the experience portion of it can always be trained now this doesn't apply to all positions it applies to some there are certain roles that are maybe more technical or more senior where an organization will always have to hire the best person in terms of experience but for the most part for your general individual contributor roles an organization would prefer to promote somebody internally. Another reason why you might not get hired, even after going through a series of interviews, is a change in the business direction. A lot goes on behind the scenes and a hiring manager might receive a change in the business's direction at any point in time. There might be cuts in the budget. There might be changes in terms of what the business wants to focus on. They might want to switch people around within the organization. There's so many reasons that are tied to business decision that could be the reason why you're not getting hired. It's nothing personal against you. It could just be that the company can no longer afford to hire you at that point in time. And if you ask me, it's better for them to not hire you than for them to hire you and then three months down the road, you get laid off. I always tell job seekers that I'm coaching that if you go through a series of interviews and your gut feeling tells you that you did well, they gave you great feedback, and you still don't get hired, don't take it personally because it might not be anything to do with you. Unless they explicitly tell you that they decided to move forward with somebody else, it could just be that the business needs have changed and at this point in time, they're no longer looking to hire. Yes, you might say it's unfair. Why did they put out the position in the first place? Why did they go through the interviews? The truth is things change at any point in time and so fast that it might not even be their fault. They probably didn't even know. They just got informed and they can't move forward. Don't, so don't take it personally against them. What I'd recommend you do whenever you get a rejection email or a recruiter calls you and thanks you for your time but tells you didn't make it, ask them for actionable feedback. Ask them to really be candid with you about what happened. Was it something you did wrong? How can you improve in the next interview? At least let it not be a complete waste of your time. Let them give you some sort of feedback you can use to do better in the next interview. Another reason that you might not get hired and people overlook this a lot is God just saved you from something terribly wrong in that organization and so God helps you dodge a bullet. God knows the end from the beginning so keep trusting in him, keep holding on to your faith and keep on applying. If it didn't work out with company A, all right, great. 
what did you learn from interviewing with company a what did you get out of that process move on to company b and keep going so my purpose of sharing all this is just to encourage you if you're going through a job search process right now and you're feeling frustrated you could really be doing your best but a lot of times it's not within your control there are a lot of other things that could be happening that you could have never changed so do what you can in terms of getting referrals getting feedback from recruiters keeping the line of communication open that's also really important a lot of people once they've been told you didn't make it burn bridges they don't even respond to the recruiter they get salty don't be that person keep the line of communication open because you never know at what point the same position will open up again and you will be the first person on the recruiters mind so keep the line of communication open if you really enjoyed interviewing with them and you really want to join that company stay connected with them take a look at their jobs if you see a new job posted reach out to that recruiter again get details ask them if you can be considered and you never know you might just get it i know people who interviewed with companies like three four times before they eventually got into those companies and so i hope you found this video encouraging and helpful don't forget to leave a like comment share the video and subscribe for more career related content. Here's a video in which I shared a few ways you can impress recruiters and hiring managers. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.